Hello, everyone. We have our guest in the studio, which is actually not a studio, but a bridge between two countries. I am in the Southern California, and Professor George Weisman is in the Philippines. I am Kubane Shtekirbashev, the director of the seminar, and George Weisman is a professor of physics. Uh, he is currently in the Philippines, and he has kindly agreed to give us an interview about his own experience with the Institute of Biosensory Psychology in St. Petersburg. Hello, George. Hi, how are you, Kuban? Very good, thank you. George, tell me about your experience with the Institute in St. Petersburg and how the Institute of Biosensory Psychology is different from other institutions doing similar work in the United States? Well, um, let me start with the second question first. Uh, in the United States, there is nothing comparable in, in size and, and seriousness and, uh, and uh, competence in the area of trading extraordinary abilities. What I think what you call it, but you know, in, in the United States we would call that either paranormal, in any case, there is nothing comparable, uh, although there are some places which, uh, which you know, do limited, limited work. Uh, um, so, so, um, as far as my own involvement, uh, about three years ago, I uh, became aware of the Institute and I communicated with them and I was interested in, uh, they, they made claims that they could teach anybody uh, telekinesis, you know, psychokinesis, moving objects at a distance to intent. And uh, I had followed the, that research for, for decades, and I was aware that micro-PK, that means the, the influence on, microsco on microscopic uh, processes, which have been amplified so that you can observe it, has been uh, performed in long series at great uh, statistical significance at Princeton and other places, and uh, uh, Dean Raiden at the islands and some very good experiments, but they require a lot of statistics and they're, they're, they're kind of not very showy. You, you don't see anything when you watch because the, the gift of the statistical significance of a single experiment is very small and you have to have a long series to get the um, Macro PK, which is actually using a macroscopic object, and seeing, seeing the movement has been very rare in experiments. And I was uh, rather taken aback, especially since they say, I mean, there have been a couple of, of, uh, of, of uh, famous um, PK subjects, you know, Paladino and, uh, and Nina Kulagina and, and uh, a couple of uh, just, I mean, you can really count them on the fingers of, of two hands that have known and had to regale them and so on that have uh, been able to perform in that way. And so it seemed very unlikely to me that, some, that they would just be able to teach anybody. I mean, I, I have no particular, as a medical background, but no particular thought. I didn't think I had any, any skills or gifts or anything in that respect. So I was kind of uh, in. I started working on physics and let me see that that uh, that um, psychokinesis is real and it actually plays an important role uh, both in theory and in practice. So I was very interested. I was very interested in following up that claim. So I agreed to go there. I went there for in, in essence for two weeks and, and um, I intensive course with uh, with private course with Natalia, the teacher that you're bringing over, and uh, I was indeed able to confirm that I, who had thought that, that, that was, uh, that I acknowledged that the 
problem exists, but I thought it was very difficult and very rare, and even I was able to learn pretty, uh, pretty well to how to do this. And since then, I have practiced at home, and I'm now doing it repeatedly uh, at a distance, even over intercontinental distances, uh, with watching the object on the Skype and so on. So I was able to, to see that I was able to do it, and then we invited uh, we invited Natalia over for about for about three weeks for a tour of the United States, and I was accompanying her everywhere. We had a total of about 200 students, and of those, uh, everyone was able to learn it too in a weekend. It really is a skill that everybody has, and not everybody is equally talented. Everybody can be brought to a level where he can demonstrate it to his own satisfaction. So I think that's remarkable and unique. Well, George, in my view, it's it's really a fabulous experience for someone like you who has devoted all your life to the science and then experiencing certain things which transcend the barriers of any science. So tell us a little bit about you, about what have you done in the past, and what are you doing now? Well, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm a physicist. I, I uh, originally studied high energy physics, particle physics, and then I gravitated towards foundations of quantum theory. And uh, what, I was, what I've been trying to do now, for involved in for about 25 years, is to make sense of quantum theory, to work at the foundations of quantum theory, uh, to make sense what it tells us about the world. The quantum theory itself is usually just used to predict experiments in the lab, but this, this and, and it hasn't been fashionable. Uh, it was fashionable in the 30s at the beginning of quantum theory, then for 20, 30 years it was not fashionable, and now it's becoming fashionable again to look at the foundations and to really understand what quantum theory is telling us. So that's what that's been my involvement, and the the uh, the particular issue of psychokinesis is important because it's a very clear experiment that demonstrate that that demonstrates that one particular interpretation of quantum theory, namely the consciousness interpretation, is uh, the correct one. Uh, the consciousness interpretation of quantum theory basically says that. The world is consciousness, our forms in consciousness, and that matter, what we think of as matter, are, is our signals or information that passes through from one aspect of consciousness to another. So, um, in particular, if if, uh, if 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 it can be demonstrated that telekinesis exists, that means that you can move objects by intention only, and moreover, if you can if you can do that at a distance of thousands of kilometers without any physical signal passing in between, then you have demonstrated the non-locality of consciousness. So that's a very uh, fascinating and important subject, and that's what I've been working on in the past couple of years now. George, what you, what you are saying is really fascinating. Both you and I come from a very materialistic world. You. Your PhD is in theoretical physics. I did my research and my thesis was in the field of anesthesiology and critical care, where there is no room for things like this. However, I believe that both you and I were those few fortunate ones who were able to transcend these uh, limitations that we see in the world and in fact experience, right? So you did so in the Institute in St. Petersburg three years ago. So tell us a little yes. bit, how did it go? Which things amazed you the most? And how was your first experience with uh, telekinesis? Well, uh, the first uh, five days, um, I was not, we were not talking about, I, I told them what I wanted. I told them that I was interested in, in particular, in focusing on telekinesis, and that's what we agreed to do. But the first five days, there was no talk about telekinesis. There was just, uh, basically, I was being sensitized to the subtle energy, of, you know, 
that they uh -huh. don't have problems, but usually unaware of it. So we became sensitized to, to movement and, and breathing and other means of it to, to where I was uh, exquisitely uh, sensitive to that energy day and night. And um, at that point, I actually just wandered by, by chance into a room where they had set up the telekinesis equipment Nobody had given me any instruction. And by the way, I should, add, I should add, I had been trying for years. I mean, for literally for years, I set up the same equipment that I have here now, which I move at will now. I had set up for years, and I was trying and trying, and I wasn't able to move it. So when I entered that room, uh, I started moving those spirals and mobiles and things that they had set up there one after the other to my amazement. And uh, after that, nobody really had to show me or, or explain to me. I just had to work with it and try it out and learn what works and what doesn't work. Well, that's a cool story, George. I, it's, um, you know, three years after you studied with Natalia Shereka, and then brought her to the United States where she had a series of um, workshops. So three years after that, we are going to do this again. What would the attendees of this workshop should expect? What, what would be the value for them to attend this workshop? And uh, what is their take home message? Well, um, are you going to be I have this limited experience. I know that Natalia had, she taught one, a one day healing workshop while, while I was with her. Uh, but most of our uh, workshops were on telekinesis. So I can, I can really mostly answer from my own experience what would happen to telekinesis if that's what she, you know, what, what you're planning to do uh, is that uh, but 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 in all the workshops, the first, the beginning, the foundation is are a few co simple concepts from, let's say, their 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 teaching of, of uh, biosensory psychology, and practicing uh, energy awareness, uh, subtle energy awareness. That, that's the foundation of everything. So I think that that I can I can speak to, that that people will, will that will learn how to actually feel and then start to manipulate that energy. People will uh, enter a room with, with these spirals here set up. I wish I could show you, but I can't turn the, the uh, I can't easily turn the uh, camera towards this uh, equipment. But uh, it will sit, stand before a cylinder with a paper spiral suspended from a thin thread under a sealed in glass and, and sealed away, completely isolated from the outside world, stationary, very quiet, stable, and then you will learn how to start to move this thing. And that is the beginning. Uh, how it goes on from there, uh, I cannot say. I, for myself, have just continued on that path. and. As I said, learned what works and what doesn't work. For instance, uh, there is one way of doing telekinesis, which was which is known, let's say, from Nina Kulagina, with extreme effort. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was. She she, she, uh, she actually died. I I, I have not heard that she died from the after effects of this kind of effort. Um, but there's another way, which is in complete fact and in ease with the object. So it kind of feels like a part of you. It's like your, like your arm or something. So you have to learn. If you didn't know how to move your arm, because let's say you never paid attention to your arm your whole, whole life, and then suddenly you look at this thing and how do I move these fingers? You know, you, you try this, you try that, you move it a little bit. Oh, that works. So in that way, you learn how to how to move in that case the object. So if you can continue on that path, then become more and more skillful. But I think that most of your 
uh, most of your students will be more interested in the medical applications. And there I have little experience. So, George, what you are saying is that the skills acquired at such a workshop could be useful for anybody and applicable in, in different settings, like uh, for, for a quantum physicist, for a physician, for full-time mother, for salespeople, for stockbrokers, and so on and so forth. And I also understand that telekinesis is only a visible tip of the iceberg that shows the effectiveness and efficiency and the power of the human mind. But the essence of the entire method is to teach people how to know themselves more and uh, use the hidden abilities. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, the telekinesis is a special case a moving an object is a special case of influencing your environment. In other words, okay. how can I heal? Uh, how can I um, bring about certain kinds of events in my life? Like there's a law of attraction kind of thing where you use that power to, to actually make certain things that you want to have happen. Uh, there's many, many different applications of that. And and the, and the other thing is, which is reception, in other words, perception, which is being, becoming sensitive to using more than your ordinary senses to know things. That's the kind of the incoming or the yin part, and yang part is the going out or affecting things. They're both complementary. And uh, in medicine, you, one would be learning how to, di how to diagnosticize, how to, and that, that uh, she told us many stories about although we didn't actually study it in, in that course. So you become, you become adept at, uh, at, at seeing what's wrong with the person. Things that you could normally not know without knowing their record or, see or, or having uh, a kind of you know, sophisticated exam, you can, you, can, uh, you, can, you can perform diagnosis and find out what, what's wrong with the person. And then the other thing is how to heal. And both those things, uh, for the healing part, you need the energy. Uh, for the for the uh, diagnosing part, you need you need the sensing. Uh, all that you, you learn at the Institute of, uh, Institute of Biosensory Psychology or at their workshops uh, abroad. So I think that it's a very worthwhile thing for somebody who's in medicine wants to uh, uh, expand their their range of, of capacity. I mean, you are the best. You are a very good example of that. You could tell them about about how you can really pain. Yeah. For example, I will. I will, George. You have mentioned that Institute of Biosensory Psychology in Saint Petersburg is uh, head and shoulders above anything comparable in the world, as far as you know and. Uh, both of us know. So I certainly haven't heard of anything like it. Yeah. Okay, if you are speaking for the United States, let me speak for the rest of the world. I've done the research and they are head and shoulders above. But my question is, George, you have mentioned that an average person, uh, you said, like yourself, could learn these things in a, in a very, very short period of time. You know, by any stretch of imagination, I wouldn't call you an average person. You, you've been studying the awareness and healing arts and quantum physics, and you work in Berkeley. So I wouldn't say you are an average. But if we talk about really average person, how real is that a two-day intensive workshop can give those extraordinary abilities that the Institute is promising they will? I think it's realistic to get your feet wet. It's realistic to get a sense of what, what's possible, uh, to get a sense of how, first of all, that it's possible, and secondly, that you can do it, but then uh, to continue will require work. It will, it will 
require uh, continuing courses. It will require your own concentration, practicing uh, on whatever you want to do as a doctor or the thing, practicing and then coming back for more and so on. So until you become a ma I'm not, you won't be a master in three days, but you'll get, you'll definitely get a beginning that's good enough to give you the confidence and the uh, and the encouragement to go on. George, you are one of the pioneers here who have explored unknown in the field of uh, healing in early 80s when pretty much nobody in the Western world was even aware about certain things existing. And uh, today you are still practicing those skills you have learned three years ago with the Institute. And can you tell me briefly what other applications of those skills in the daily life? How would the knowledge and experience of those skills help you in daily life? Well, I'll, I'll speak e e even just from the, on the basis of telekinesis, which as I said is, a, is a kind of an exciting, important, but nevertheless narrow application of this. Mm -hmm. uh, even with that, it gives you the opportunity to observe experientially, which is different from just knowing about it or having theoretical reasons to believe that it's true, uh, or even uh, following experiments and seeing that, that it's an experiment, but actually experientially experience that there is an intimate connection between you and your, what you call your mind, your intention, and a physically completely separate, seemingly completely separate object. In other words, you are connected with the world. What you do and what you, what's going on in your mind and in your heart has a direct influence in ways that you, you cannot even see. In this case, with telekinesis, you can make it visible. That's why it's so, so interesting. Okay. And that's why you actually develop a relationship with an object which is not just a subject-object relationship, but a, 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 much a, a, um, an e a relationship between equals. I mean, <laughs> it sounds funny, but you, you, develop, you learn how to work with the object instead of just doing things to the object. Okay. Well, George... It's truly transformative. When I had the first time, when this happened to me in that room that I was telling you about, yes. in the St. Pete, uh, I would, my head was spinning. I mean, I was just in, in absolute in awe. And although I'm now more used to it and I'm doing it every day, it still it still amazes me and it still, I mean, it, it really was a transformative experience. We are not, I'm not separate from the world in the way classical, classical science or classical physics would have it. I mean, that, can only interact through sending out light or electrons or bullets or something over there and then getting it from their back through signals or, or this is there's a, another kind of uh, communication another kind of being together in the world and that's what you can directly experience and that's a very I think a very well I also think it's very important and I also think it's a very fascinating experience to so not only you would be able to amuse family and friends with your new skills, but you actually can apply them first for yourself and also helping others. George, I thank you very much for your time. I know it's half hour past midnight at where you live and uh, appreciate uh, you finding time for us and as we invite people to attend this important event. And uh, I promise we will share more cool stories after we have these workshops. Thank you, George, and all the best in your research and in your book about the quantum paradigm. Thank you.